So as a matter of fact, we act and think as if these values were objective rather than merely subjective. So mm -hmm. where does that come from? Where, where is that sourced in? If we deny objective values, we should be aware of the price we must pay. For denying objective values is something far more drastic than merely denying conventional or uh, a, a parochial or standards of behavior. It's to deny rationality itself. Right, exactly. And so where's he going with this? Well, he says this, what is true, right, after all? And he says, uh, it is uh, many things, obviously, but among them, it is certainly an ethical value. So truth is an ethical value. The truth is what we ought to believe and what we ought to speak with uh, one another. And so these oughts are oughts of ethical value. Right. right? Right. So, so even if we did something like peer review, this is the point that I usually make is, OK, you could have all the peer review literature in the world. But if no one's uh, able to reproduce it with true statements like, oh, I, I reproduced this uh, this uh, experiment and I found the same thing. Well, if you didn't do that, that doesn't add to a, a, the, the truth of the statement that just uh, makes you a liar. And once found out, it doesn't uh, advance the argument whatsoever. It just bolsters this idea that, well, peer review is the highest form of, of knowledge. And uh, the, the idea behind that is more, uh, you know, there's an objective standard out there and uh, it's uh, beholden upon all of us to, 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 uh, um, to interact with it in the same way. And then we are to, should communicate that truthful outcome uh, to other people. And so that, that's where the, the peer review aspect comes from it. And so to, to tell the truth or to say, uh, I, I did this and I believe that you're uh, wrong in, in, you know, the, the way that you did this experiment and I got this conclusion, the, there's the, the, there's where the ethical part of it comes in. Even, even talking to one another, uh, we, we base it on ethical standards. I, I, I come up to you and I say, you know, um, I disagree with, with what you did at work. And so now I'm going to punch you. Well, that that's an, unethical standard because that doesn't talk to the the the, the facts of the case it's it's only i'm able to hit you and, and that has nothing to do with whether uh it, it was right or wrong so the the ethical uh value of even talking uh to one another uh is is formulated even here yeah right so we have to have some type of objective objective standard in fact he says the assertion that ethical values are merely subjective is self-contradictory like all statements of subjectivism or skepticism. Skepti skepticism. He says, uh, for the subjectivist is telling us that we have an objective moral obligation to agree with subjectivism. See the problem there? <laughs> the subjectivist is telling us that we have an objective moral obligation to agree with subjectivism, while also telling us that no one has an objective moral obligation to do anything. Right. Well, you can't have it both ways, right? Either the, we have an objective obligation, therefore subjectivism is wrong, or we don't have a, a, a subje an objective obligation, and therefore I don't care what your subjectivism says. I have one too, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> so my, my subjectivism yeah. is that all of us have to have one agreed upon objective value system. And so we go from <laughs> yeah. there. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Which is self-defeating, by the Which way. Which is self-defeating. Okay, fine. All right. We didn't solve world peace at, at, at the yeah. end. All right. <laughs> well, okay. But before we consider the origin of moral values, let us note one more point. Ethical values are hierarchical and they're, they're structured that way. We should seek to make our children feel good is one ethical value, right? It's something that uh, I think we all can agree on. We want our mm -hmm. children to, to uh, feel good, to be happy, uh, to, to have what's best. But for most of us, it is a secondary value to we should seek to teach our children self-discipline. One of those ways is, well, yeah, my, my children would love to have their iPads and, and play Roblox 24-7. But at some point, they're going to have to learn math in order to figure out how much Roblox accounts for real money. And actually, probably the value of Roblox is uh, way better than even what the dollar is uh, at the at the taping of this <laughs> of this episode. <laughs> but. At any single moment, there is one principle that takes precedence over all the others. One that prevails over all uh, the others is governing our behavior. And we we can see that by just walking through, okay, well, when, when come upon 
uh, if you're a doctor, do no harm. Well, uh, I've, I've found a person who's who's laying out in the street and I can save them uh, by by um, cutting them open and removing this thing. I don't have their permi- permission. Well, I should always have their permission, except this one thing could save their life to for them to, to sue me. So at, at what point do we get you know up the rung of the ladder to say, here's our single most important hierarchical peak of, of, of ethical behavior? Well, that highest value is not only objective, but also absolute, for it takes pre- uh, precedence over all others and serves as a criterion for the truth of others. All right. So notice what he's done here. He says, okay, let's consider more values. He says they're hierarchical, right? So some take precedent over others. They're higher than others. They're more important than others. Right. They should be, um, you know, exercised over others. But now, where do we stop? Well, he says there is a stopping point, right? There is a highest value that we kind of take that is over all the rest of the values, right? And so the next question then is, well, where does the authority of the absolute moral principle, the highest one, where does that authority come from? Mm-hmm. Right? And yeah, so and I, I think we can, we can look at this, especially as Americans, is wh- where, where, where do we find the most uh, um, uh, ideas stem from for things like rebelling against the, the Stamp Act or, or you know, the, the, the Boston Tea Party? Well, it wasn't just rooted in the fact of of taxation, uh, which in and of itself is immoral and illegal, uh, but also it, it was it, it, it was written about in in terms of freedom and liberty, and and that that's what uh, 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 caused more people to to write points and counterpoints. If uh, depending on uh, you know if you were for the rebellion or or for uh, 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 staying uh, as as a loyalist. Um, uh, so you have the idea of well, no taxation without representation. But the king is ultimately the the one in authority, and we don't go against him. Therefore, don't rebel. But then you have people who are writing about you know Lockean type uh, ideas of liberty and freedom, and then from there say, uh, and and thus the king can't just uh, do away with uh, what what should ultimately reside in the power of the governors, and uh, therefore this is immoral because of that, and so. Uh, you, you have that type of of, of hierarchy, uh, even um, in kind of what us as Americans kind of view. And it's the ones we always go back to and, and read more and more, even though, yes, we should read about how seven cents for a, a stamp increase is um, immoral, even if the king does it. <laughs> <laughs> right. So notice he's getting at the source of morality. And he says uh, there is this hierarchy, right? Some are higher than others. But there's always one that abs- that's absolutely authoritative over all the rest of it, all the rest of them. And so he says, but, you know, what's the source of that? And he, and he you know, he kind of cautions us that he's not asking whether the conviction itself, right, that this one is higher than the rest of them. He's not asking for the source of that. It's a, the source of that conviction as if it were a causal argument. The question, he says, concerns the authority of that principle. Why should I give it the enormous respect that indeed we do give it, that is the highest, you know, principle that we use to judge all the rest of the things? That we do? And right. he says, well, ultimately, there's only two kinds of answers that are possible. The source of absolute morality uh, and moral authority is either personal or impersonal. Mm-hmm. That's what he says. So that's basically, ultimately, there's, those are the two answers that we can come up with. Either the sources uh, of absolute morality uh, and moral authority is personal or it's impersonal. 